And we are back this time to talk about some uh, beautiful dress watches. Uh, there's one of mine here, the uh, Patek yeah. 5296. I got so lucky. So when I put it on the time grapher, finally, I was amazed. I thought really it was going to run a bit poorly. So I got the watch on it. So it's no, no box, no paper. But it goes to show you buy the, the seller and when you buy from Japan, always yeah. always a great experience and always a good yeah. surprise because there's not a single scratch on it and it runs amazing so really a beautiful watch and i really uh, enjoy it enjoy the sector dial and the uh, the strap actually yeah. the original strap oh, it's, a, it's a beautiful piece that and I, I concur with what you're saying in japan uh, i used to go to japan a lot for work uh, and i've never bought a secondhand watch from uh, japan but i've spent quite a lot of time in uh, Vintage shops over there because that's what I do. You yeah. know, if I've got spare time. Have you been to Nakano? Uh, no, I've not. So many, so many huge mega really? shops, and you can buy online actually. Uh, if you guys are interested, go. To, I think it's uh, Jack and Road or Betty and Road. There's a couple of shops there. Uh, if you can find the uh, the, the websites, and uh, they, they they deliver. But they really, I mean, the Rolex stuff is super overpriced. It's really targeted for mostly the mainland Chinese visitors. Right yeah. now, they must be hurting. But all the rest, like if you're looking for an unusual, I remember a Hewer or even a Ben Ross uh, yeah. limited edition, it's going to cost really uh, pretty pretty low. Uh, so very interesting there. But in central Tokyo as well, Nakano is just off Shinjuku, so not very yeah. far. Uh, but but yeah, Japan they're, they're very uh, very careful. About they're they're very things. careful. They're very careful, and therefore you you what what I thought when I went uh, to see uh, a number of dealers there and and Rolex dealers. So that's a few years ago, but uh, the, the condition was just uh, was just impeccable. It's right? ridiculous. They, they, they are they are they they are very careful uh, about that. Very respectful. I think in general it speaks to the culture as well, where you know they like yeah. craft in general. And they respect that, and uh, they tend to look after what they're they're buying. So, but this this I think you've done you've done uh, you've done so well. Um, it's it's the uh, best iteration I think of uh, Calatrava uh, that Patek has done in many many years. Um, the the five two nine six in its uh, traditional Calatrava um, uh, form with uh, you know the stick. Uh, the stick baton and the, the dauphin uh, hands is really beautiful too but uh, on that one i think that the the presence of the date uh, kind of ruins a bit the symmetry of the dial whereas on the on the sector dial like that i think it's uh, it's well integrated um, and also i like the fact that you went for the rose gold version uh, because the the white gold version with the with the really navy uh, hands and sector uh, is a bit monochromatic and it's a bit um, Austere at time. Yeah. I think th this. Well, I already had my longer annual calendar and a, and a white gold uh, Patek travel time. Yeah. As you can see here the longer next to it, same kind of shades. Uh, it's very complementary. But if I yeah. had gone for white gold, it would just be too redundant. So that's yeah. the way I build my collection. I like to have different complications, diff different dial uh, layouts, and uh, well, different metals in, ca in the case of the. Uh, yeah. Dress watches. So, so this is um, it, it's actually interesting, and um, maybe it's a good segue way to um, to talk about how I picked this uh, this uh, this longer um, eighteen fifteen uh, up yeah, down up down no, auf up uh, in German. So auf uh, up the the one with the with the power reserve. Um, a few years ago, uh, I really wanted to get. Uh, a really classic uh, dress watch from you know a top brand and I started to look around what there was and um, what was interesting uh, and obviously like everybody uh, you start with Patek because the Calatrava is just such a classic design uh, it's just a you know wonderful uh, iconic design um, first the the 5196 uh, which is uh, the purest uh, but I, I very soon discarded that model just because of the kind of movement uh, that was inside, which is the uh, movement uh, 215 PS, um, which is a 22 millimeters movement that they put in a 37 millimeter case. Uh, and, and for me, that's uh, Patek being, being a bit lazy and complacent. 
uh, especially since this movement is like 45 or 46 years old and I just didn't see the value of what they were selling it at. Uh, it's increased in price. I just looked at the, what they're going for right now. Uh, they're going for 20,000 US dollars if you want the yellow gold version, 22,000 if you want the white gold or uh, the rose gold. And honestly, at that price point, I'm expecting a, a more modern movement that actually fits the case. So I discarded that. Uh, this uh, this watch was far more interesting, the 5296. Uh, but as I was saying, uh, on the traditional dial, Calatrava dial, I, I thought that the symmetry wasn't there because of the date. Uh, and this one, uh, the sector dial is, uh, I guess, a little bit more sporty in, uh, in nature. And I really wanted something more more classic. So I, I just skipped Patek and I went elsewhere. Um, another one that I really liked is uh, the Vacheron, uh, Vacheron Constantin uh, Patrimony Traditionnel. Uh, so f fantastic watch, very much the same kind of design as the, uh, um, the Patek Philippe uh, 5196 small second at six o'clock uh, they have a, a a really nice movement inside 65 hours power reserve extremely classic it's a very very nice watch and, and I, I almost got that but then i started to really learn more about uh, longer and what they're doing and what their philosophy to watchmaking was and uh, you know on top of the look that that really won me over you know the fact that there is a, a double assembly uh, because it's the only way that they can do this seeing that they're using this plate that's in German silver if they don't want to stain it uh, by just manipulating it so much they have to first assemble it, regulate it and so forth then they have to disassemble it finish all of the parts and put it back together and regulate it one last time so, and, and add the oil yes exactly in order to and, and it's, it's just uh, uh, that, that extra step that they're the only ones doing and that they're doing for all of their watches and it, it, it doesn't really matter whether it's an entry-level Saxonia or you know a half million US dollars or you know million dollar pièce unique that they're going to be producing so um, I, I started to look at this and uh, I really really like their 1815 line because I find it uh, fantastic to read it's it's probably one of my most legible watch you cannot not read the time on, on that thing. That Always user friendly. Uh, the longer they want the, the hands to pop. Yeah. The most same thing on my calendar. The, the calendar is on the background. Is the the blued hands are the first thing you you see and it's very legible. Yeah, I, I think that uh, yours is probably one of the most legible. You know, uh, annual calendar from any any brand I can think well, of. Not really the calendar because, you know, the yeah, day it, and the date are on the same dial and it's, you have to squint to, to find it. It's, uh, it's not like having the... the now let uh, me rephrase, to read the time, because, there's, the a time, yeah. because there's a number of watches where it's so complex the, time gets the dial lost. that uh, you, you, you find it very difficult and it's probably the, the thing that you want to, to see the most in a watch. So I first looked at the 1815, the, the normal one, so with a small second at six o'clock, which is fantastic. But then I'm like, I, I look, I, I saw this um, uh, Reserve de Marche, right, uh, uh, complication, and I just thought it added a bit of, um, you know, zip to, to the dial. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, nice. it's, 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 got, um, it's got this little, you know, touch of red on the, um, uh, on the power reserve that just pops a little bit, not too much. Uh, the, the fact that the two subdials are off center, um, I, I just thought it was a it was a classic watch with a twist, and I and I really really liked that. And, and it doesn't it have doesn't it have a zero reset function? Yes, well? and that's the kind Maybe of you stuff. want to wind it and uh, and demonstrate. So so this is a, this is a thing. The watch is stopped right now, and you can see the power reserve is uh, is empty, and you see that the uh, uh, the second hand stopped at uh, at sixty. Um, and that's by design mm. so uh, meaning that when you set the time well, you would set the time then you would have your time of reference and you would push the the crown back in when uh, it hits you know 60 on your reference time and it would start again and I, I just think it's a kind of stuff that they're doing that provides something extra 
you don't have that on, uh, on from other makers. Um, so how is, how is the winding? The winding is is uh, is superb. Uh, I set the time exactly exactly right, and when I've got my reference time that hits the sixty second, I just I just if you start winding there, it's going to start. Right, like the Moon Watch, by the way, and that's one thing I like about the uh, manual wind watches. And you guys, everyone should consider having one because, uh, especially when you have a long power reserve. How long is the power reserve on this one? It's three days. Three days is perfect. It's better than having a two-day automatic, which yeah. is going to let you down uh, on Monday morning. Hmm. Three days is perfect, and if it's a pleasure to wind like this one, it's even it's even better. But what I like, yeah, is the the moon watch. The se the first the second you you wind it, uh, it starts going. So what what I do to uh, set the time is simply I wait for my reference time second to reach uh, the, the same second where my watch stopped I just start winding it at the one second before and it starts right away yeah. then I pull the crown and I set the time because when you pull the crown there's no hacking on, the, yeah. on, on this watch and I find it very very easy some people just don't, uh, don't, don't get it you know once you get used to it it's, uh, it's a pleasure as well this one is a lot more mechanical feeling this one is going to be more, more buttery yeah it, uh, and I think that they're they're taking really great effort to make sure that um, the tactile impression that you're having when you manipulate their watch is uh, you have you really have a, a good experience be it with a chronograph because the, the pusher it's, it's yeah. just f the action is fantastic the Vacheron is not bad in that uh, respect no 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 it's not bad but it it's is great. but 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 I think that the longer is, is I think better where longer goes the next level is on the side for there's two pushers one for the date one for the hour yeah is that it's not when you push that changes it it's when you release yeah to take out however hard you push out of the equation yeah uh from uh from, from it and, and i think it is so considerate and, and so well, well thought so here you have it on the blue beautiful blue yeah. strap so it seems a bit lighter than mine mine is almost looks black maybe it's just uh, because no, i'm no, shining the, a big light the, on the, on it right now mine is uh, mine is blue and it's not a it's not a longer strap it's a camille fournet ah again. camille again Bonjour. It's, it's camille again and again it's got the the lining that's uh, made of uh, rubber to not ruin it uh, immediately right right, uh, right. but i i really wanted I didn't want the black. I mean, the black is very traditional. It's very, uh, very dressy. Um, but the blue uh, kind of matches the, the hands. And it's just a little bit easier to wear it's day the best to day. Color. Blue is the best color with everything. Yeah. You can wear anything with blue. Yes, you, you, you really can. Because this, for instance, if you wear jeans, it's going to be okay. But uh, the blue is dark enough. And interestingly, when you have a navy blue color that's, that's very dark, yeah. Under artificial light, it's going to look completely black. It's going to look blacker than black. Meaning yeah. that if you were in a black tie outfit, you could definitely wear this and nobody would notice that it's blue and it's not black. So I, I find it extremely uh, versatile. So how do people find Camille Fournay? We're not paid by, by him, but uh, your straps are really uh, great quality. And so uh, uh, if you are in, uh, in Hong Kong or Paris or Singapore and I don't know where else, uh, they're distributed by uh, Mr. Chrono, mm. but you can also uh, order them online. Okay. Uh, you have a strap configurator, but you really need to know uh, what you're doing there. You probably need to call them as well, or I would really ask them to take an actual picture of the, the leather you're going to, uh, to choose to not have a, a bad surprise. Everything is uh, impeccable, right? But you just want to make sure you're getting something, you know, according to your specification in terms of, uh, of color. Um, so this is rubber on the uh, yeah. underside, so that's yeah. fine in the summer. Yeah. And you, it fits your, your buckle, your longer buckle perfectly. Yeah, but again, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can get anything done, right? So uh, this, is a, this is a 2016, but if you had a watch which was a 2018, they'd do that. Sure. If you want to, uh, if you don't have a flat section because the spring bar is curved, They'll do that as well. They will do anything. They're a custom strap maker. Uh, what what this has as well, as you can see, it has a, a quick release yeah. uh, oh, that's uh, nice. uh, on this, which makes it very easy if I wanted to change. So same as you have stock from uh, the Patek here. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a very good feature. Reminds me that I have a actually a black strap with a blue 
uh, blue stitching for That's for nice. this that was sent by the, the the seller. I don't know if it's. I think it's a it's a Patek strap actually. Uh, so I haven't tried it yet. It's going to completely change the the feel. But I love the the brown. It's oh, it's this nice is and casual. So yeah. But uh, but yeah. No, so Camille Fournet, uh, if if you do have a a really nice dress watch and you want to treat yourself and if you want something a little bit different like a different mm. stitching or a different color or and they've got just so many types of leather uh, that uh, you could find anything I mean you can go like really wild if you want I mean if you want like a, a hot pink uh, uh, large-scale alligator bracelet you can get that too. Well, the wild, what's the wildest animal? Ostrich? Uh, ost ostrich is... Pangolin? <laughs> Pangolin, yeah <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Ostrich people should know. Uh, it's it's a, it's a great um, it's a great leather. It's not the best if you live in a tropical or a subtropical country because it's too soft and it absorbs humidity too much. So it's then it's going to grow feathers. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but uh, you're probably not going to last very long. It's not going to last very long in this kind of climate. I mean, uh, the reason why you have to 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 put your light on right now is because the the weather is just so awful today it's been raining a beautiful yeah. week last week in hong kong and now this, this morning yeah. is just uh yeah bucketing down it almost looks like a like a typhoon is uh, is coming yeah so yeah so i'm i i really like this i mean no, almost got one uh before getting my uh, and, and my annual calendar they had an up down uh with the browns um it was a uh, yellow gold yeah brown strap so a bit uh, of the same feel in colors uh, as this, and uh, when you look at the back side, is the uh, actually it's even more interesting almost. Uh, well, it is maybe than the uh, annual calendar, which is all wheels hidden under the, under it. Yeah. So there's actually more screws showing, and a couple of more more things happening on the the three quarter plate yeah, uh, of this one, which is great. So that's uh, something I've said a few times. If you don't want to go into the higher complications. The up down um, has the the same beauty of the on the back side, and uh, it's so so interesting on the on the front. Those yeah. two registers, uh, yeah, I really like the the model. And uh, I hesitate. I think I could have uh, just as well gone for an up down and uh, save save money and maybe get a get the Patek annual. Yeah, I just uh, just went the the other way because I felt it, it was. This one is a bit smaller. Mine is 40. This is 39 or 38? That, that's 39, yes. 30, 39. So I felt like 40 was good for me. I could go uh, yeah. up to that size. And it's mostly because it, it was better than the Patek uh, in every way. Uh, annual calendar. And I did, really wanted to have a, a calendar uh, watch. And I was ready to make that, uh, that commitment in terms of, uh, of money. Uh, we will see in the future, but I think longer makes a lot less watches than uh, than Patek, especially the annual calendar uh, 5146. Well, the production for uh, for longer is four to five thousand watches a year, which is about uh, ten times less than uh, than Patek. Right? Maybe we can end with that, because right now you know longer people say it's. Uh, I mean, obviously you can see that it's uh, a bit soft on the secondary market, which means we can buy those watches. At a great price, great get amazing value. I think from there, once you're the second owner, you're not going to lose money. No, I think on, uh, on these. Yeah, you know, may, maybe five, ten percent, but but not something that's. They going keep to on be renewing stupid. and yeah. they bring new things, yeah. and so they're not going to damage the equity of uh, of the, the the watch you have. And in ten years, when when there's like five hundred thousand, five one four six in the market. There's going to be only one thousand of uh, of the yeah, of, of these or two thousands. It will be interesting to see if they can if they manage to to uh, to build the brand equity. It's going to be it's, a marketing it's a, thing. It's, it's, it's a very the partner group. it's a very uh, but they're left alone, right? Yeah. It's one of the only watches within Richemont that they know that they can only do five thousand watches a year. They they can't you know saturate. Uh, the market the way that they're doing with uh, IWC or other brands so they tend to be left alone a little bit more which is probably the reason why they didn't screw up the brand in the same way that you know IWC has in my view despite you mm -hmm. know uh, a reasonable uh, commercial success but uh, uh, I find most of the models right now not to my taste but again per personal op opinion um, but they're, they're just doing things right 
they're doing things in the way that they feel is uh, is consistent to them uh, and I really applaud them for that and it's uh, very creative I mean the movement is yeah. they always come up coming up with new the, movements the, the only the only thing that I that I would knock them on is the fact that uh, except for the new you know Odysseus it's the same case for everything right. and, and it would be great if from time to time they came up with a bit more creativity you know we were talking about Vacheron because Vacheron does this extremely well right they 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 invent new shapes that you mm. you haven't necessarily thought of, and it's very creative. And uh, it's uh, some of them are, are really incredible. Whereas there, you know, pretty much all of the all of the cases are going to be similar. So uh, it's uh, it, the difference is really yeah. going to be the complications. Uh, just to add to this, an, another contender um, from uh, Langer would have been the Saxonia. With, but but just like a, a simple three hand Saxonia. And even the the, the late one is nice. There's one on oh, sale the, actually the, right the, now, which is the, black the, dial. The, the one with the with cool a, watch. With a with a with a with a, a big, big with a big date. Yeah. Yes, that is fantastic. Wow, uh, it's a cool watch and not crazy expensive. No, yeah, that that is fantastic. So so if uh, that that could have been a contender as well because it's just uh, great. Um, this is a lot I, more I, I elegant. Just, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I just more. thought that this was, uh, you know, hitting the spot yeah. where it's it's classic, but it has just a little bit of, of something that's different because of the uh, uh, the power reserve, and uh, and I was happy with that. The thing and with this 1815 is the chronograph as well, is that you buy that and you just can't believe how beautiful it is. Yeah, I, and sometimes I think, it's just maybe too beautiful for for you. <laughs> but but I think that uh, it, and it's also it's really these kind of watches that you need to see. Uh, in reality and not just in pictures because the, the I think shine of the dial doesn't translate at all on the on the video in person uh, when you're in, the, in an elevator with a bit of a darker light it scintillates yeah in a way that I just can't render uh, hardly on, the, on my videos but because it's a stunning silver with a coating yes right that's what it is it's a uh, so yeah it's a uh, I mean everything in this in this watch just oozes luxury really uh, uh the, the hands you know the, the 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 those alpha those blue alpha hands the the dial that's in silver this uh uh what's called german silver which is not actual silver uh plate that they use uh that is um, better than the brass that uh, other watchmaker are using because it's uh, it has it's a bit more rigid and therefore it will it will hold the parts better mm. and that's also one of the reason for the three-quarter plate is because it, it just brings more stability so this but it's also somewhat anti-magnetic i think the, i'm not sure the alloy itself I, th I think i heard i'm not quite quite sure about it yeah but i'm wondering it, to what extent it protects the yeah but then the 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 the, the the, the hairspring is completely exposed anyway that's so, the thing yeah so, so uh, I, i'm not sure that maybe being around it I you know, know i i, I I'm not sure that I would go in uh, work at uh, CERN uh, with this. Uh, but with what this I like with longer is that they're very substantial. You don't feel like uh, you can't wear it in a casual way going to the bar. While the uh, Pateks, which are more voluptuous in, uh, in their cases, they, they feel a lot more flimsy and uh, you, you're a bit more conscious uh, about wearing them. To me, the, the longer has a substance to, to it, especially though those, but, but look, those uh, cases with the, the, but, the but, flanks. But, but the thing is also, I mean, this is, you can make an argument that this is dressier because it's just so much slimmer than, than this, right? Yeah. Uh, this is remarkably thin for a watch that has a, an automatic movement. So again, which is Incredibly one of the reasons why I, I thought that one. this particular model is, uh, is, is really great uh, and you've done really well on, on that. It, Picking a, a Patek Calatrava, that's what I would have uh, gone for. It's uh, and and obviously they had to discontinue it because it was it was really good. <laughs> it was too nice. So. It was too nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's leave it there. Uh, we're going to move on to the Minerva because uh, that's uh, that's something you don't see every day. All right, guys. Bye bye.